Generic greetings and welcome to the movies. Today's beverage is a nice relaxing cup of chamomile tea. Very chilled out indeed. So the movies is, I guess, technically a business management simulator set in the 1920s and onwards through the golden age of cinema. It was released in 2005 by Lionhead and with all that said and done, I have very fond memories of it, but the actual moment to moment I really couldn't remember much about. I remembered it as being, well, very fun and very creative and a mix between The Sims and Windows Movie Maker. However, a lot of it, like the moment to moment and how you play it and such, I really couldn't remember. And I thought, you know what? We haven't actually played this on the channel, despite it being a prime sort of candidate for a nostalgia video. So I thought, let's rectify that and make a video. I've seen a couple of other YouTubers play it recently as well, so that sort of spurred me on. So either way, a couple of things before we jump into this one. I will put links in the description for wherever place I can find about the game, but as far as I can tell, it isn't on sale anymore, which is a big shame because it is still very fun and very playable. Also, it looks a bit stretched because it was built for 4v3 aspect ratio and obviously I've tried to uh, br bring that up a little bit. So yeah, it's a little bit stretched and I think that's about it. Oh, also, I've played about an hour on in this game here. Normally I like to jump in and play it. Um, as you see it and get sort of, uh, you know, full reactions of it. But because there's so much tutorial in the game, I've sort of skipped ahead on that one. Anyway, we start in the 1920s and we have created generic productions, which there is our flag there and our logo, which is a star with a toilet in front of it, because that's probably where most of our productions will be flushed down. You can see it does say the movies studio there. And we are currently on 1923, so actually not very far into the game at all. I'm just going to grab these stars and give them an auto make over there just to keep them occupied for now there we are uh, and the idea is that you basically make movies but not just not just make movies like in a sort of dry windows movie maker type of thing which to be fair you can do uh, you can do full scripts and plan every little detail if you do so desire but you have to build the movie studio up from literally the ground up so you get this big plot uh, you turn up with two things a dream and three million pounds <laughs> <laughs> no, you actually turn up with, um, I believe, is it half a million or two? No, it's $250,000, uh, so, hmm, it's not an inconsiderable amount of money, especially in 1920. I don't know where we've got that money from, but there you are. So we build these buildings, like we've got a stage school and casting office and all of the production buildings and things like a writer's room, which for some reason looks, it's just a log cabin. Uh, yeah, it's got, like, moss on the roof and all sorts. We've also got, obviously, the places to shoot our films, which includes different sets, so we've got the very basic set here which is just a backdrop that just gets folded across we've got a, like a basement here we've got a wild west saloon a sort of jules verne um I guess you could call it steampunk, but this is uh, predates the term of steampunk, I guess. But this thing here, this retro futury type thing, and then we've got another uh, back lot here, which is uh, like a Wild West shootout area. Anyway, the idea is that you have to get a uh, script and uh, start, you know, going through all that process. So I've got a script here called The King of the Pile. It's an action script, so I'm going to get that script and I'm going to begin casting. It requires two crew, which we have, and one extra. So there we are. That's Laura Kate Raw, and we've got our crew and we now we need a director and at least one lead role we do have both of these however this person Shirley Timmins sadly is not very happy why is that um ah salary I think they're probably wanting a bit more money so let's go ahead and alter that so I'm going to give them a little bit more cash there we go in fact I'm just gonna up the salary for both of them that should hopefully cheer them up yet yeah, that's now cheering them up a little bit so we're gonna take our director here and drop them in the direction uh, bit and it says oh movie star experience negative so basically they're not very good at this sort of thing but uh, apparently they have a good genre fit for our star which is Beth Galloway our director Shirley and Beth the uh, the star there so the film is now being rehearsed so they're going to go through the lines and you can see they're sort of in their own little worlds here and obviously just checking things out making sure everything's planned getting the hitting the marks all that sort of thing insert many other terms uh, filming terms here <laughs> and once that's done we'll put it to production and shoot it so here's one what's big and sounds like a mouse the answer is a house yes mhm so we have a radio in the game which with the best will in the world is 
uh, utterly infuriating? Yeah, that's about right. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, there's several things that I totally sort of forgot about the game, and one of them was the radio. And you do have this radio announcer that starts off very, very dismissive of the whole idea of films and them catching on. Um, so they're like, oh yes, there's these new films that are coming out and the movies, whatever. You know, it's, I'm, a, I'm I was I was classically trained at stage school, and you know I have the radio voice and all this sort of thing that he's going on about. You know, the, the won't catch on is basically what they're what they're saying there. And then yeah, I think as the game goes by, they get more passive aggressive about the whole thing, and uh, probably by the end of it, he's crying into his beverage because he can't get a job. Uh, I'm going to create a couple of janitors here because you may notice that we have these like bits of moss and weed in between the in between the um, pavement here so they're going to go around and sort that out. You can see it's all like this is sort of sandy desert like dry I guess but the janitors will actually plant will actually plant some um, yeah we'll actually plant some of this turf and such to make it look a bit better. So over here we can see that this is our film and we click on that and see it says cast and crew Shirley Timmons on set. Beth Galloway. Oh the background's changed. Yeah I can't remember what those rocks are. They've been in pretty much everything. Um, I always think Back to the Future 3 for some reason. Anyway we have uh, one extra and two crew and you can see the shooting schedule. It says Wild West Desert, Wild West Desert, Wild West Desert. So basically it's all in Wild West Desert. Oh actually wait, they're actually shooting it now so if I double click you can see this is well, this is what's getting made and this is what will come out on the final product and you can change if you want to these sliders here to say I'll be really sad, I'll be scared or whatever so you can make minor alterations as it's being shot. Um, we'll sort of maybe do that later on. We also have this film here, Love Lasso, which is sadly it's now archived. What I'm going to do is I could go to archive, but I'm actually going to go to movie player and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what was shot. So yeah, it's a silent film. It's just got the piano bit in there. No speech. That's a Lionhead Movies production. A generic productions production, <laughs> which tickles me more than it should. So that's Love Lasso starring Laura Kate Rowe as Roy Dent. And there we go. This is, this is what the film is. But as obviously the time goes on at the moment, you know, it's black and white, it's grainy, it's very wooden. Uh, as time goes on, you get more technology, so you can get sound and orchestral uh, orchestral soundtracks, voiceovers, obviously colour, things like that. And we're not going to watch the whole thing, because that's, to be fair, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to bring that to the archive and get rid of it. I'm also going to go over to here, and I'm going to get my writers to start writing another film. What is hot at the moment? Um, not much, really. I'm going to go for probably some sci-fi. I remember when I last played this, which to be fair was about a decade ago, maybe longer, I made the sci-fi productions uh, lot and my whole thing... Not too convinced that is the case, but there you are. Yes, you do get world events as, as things go on. Yes, as I was saying about the about the whole um, studio that I did, it was all sci-fi, and that's all we produced. And I leaned very much into later on the research. What's wrong here? What's what? What's that's that movie kicking? Oh, I think she was a bit upset for some reason or something. Anyway, yes. Um, so I made loads of sci-fi films and put a lot of effort into researching all of the new sets and stuff ahead of time. So we had. Well, you'll see when we make the movie at the end of it, it, it's rated and a lot of that rating is reflected in the quality of the sets and things like that. But everything affects the quality of the film right from the very first draft of the script up to the final release and push. So it, things like the quality of the sets, the upkeep, the maintenance, uh, the star power of the star. We can right click on them here and we can see all different things. They also have addictions and like have stresses and things like that and uh, images and physique and... Yeah, and they have to get on with people as well, so they have relationships with other, with other like uh, crew members and cast and the director and such. So we're talking away. I just noticed as well that every time they finish shooting a scene, everybody's clapping. Uh, yeah, that's definitely an actor. They <laughs> need constant positive reinforcement. Anyway, I'm going to go over to the front lot here, and I think we're going to make it a little better because at the moment it is fairly terrible. So let's go to tarmac here. I'm going to tarmac right up until the front, which is about right, and then we're going to place grass along here and then along here because, well, why not? And this car we can move over. I'm going to put a car there, and oh, we've got some new stuff. I think we've got some new stuff. I just researched. 
I think it was just just researched. Yeah, we've got cars. There's a Chrysler, and no, we've got one of those. Let's put one of these standard 1920s cars, I think, and a nice sleek statue right in the front there. Sadly, we can't put it in the middle. That's a shame, but that will have to do. And there we go. Nice. <laughs> you can also spin the camera around and uh, see out here with all the cars driving along. Pretty good. Anyway, it looks like we've got this, uh, the Caesar Utterances. This is a sci-fi film. I'm going to... Do I don't want to shoot it? I could start to shoot it. You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to begin casting and I'm going to check to see who's here. So we have uh, Daniel Talbot, who's got very good physique and decent looks. And then we have Flynn Hallworth, which has got decent looks, but not a great physique. So the hard to please, easily stressed, easily bored, lives to eat. Yep, they are definitely director material. And for our... For this person here, and they should, they're going to be an actor. So what we'll do is we'll take our director and actor and we're going to bring them over here. So there is a director. They are not very good with this sort of thing, but to be fair, they are brand new. Uh, we need two crew and no extras. So this is crew, I believe. Yeah, crew facility. So each one of these will go create crew and create crew. I'm not too bothered on, you know, what they have going there. Just the stats wise, I don't think. I think they're all the same. Um, you can also get, as I said, extras. And the extras you can promote to movie stars, I believe. But it's been a while since I since I have uh, got down went down that route. Really, I'm going to do some action, uh, do an action flick here because if we look at that one, it does state that it is uh, yes action. When I, when I wanted to do that anyway, it said that action was really really popular. So anyway, we have anything in here? We are fifth on our studio charts. Top is Creamboat Creations, next is Line A Productions, then Old Rope Cinema, then Maxi Pack Worldwide. That is our cinema there. We also have the stars as well, so we are not even in the top 10 for the stars. And movies, ah, well, 17th onwards. So, yeah, that's, um, it's not ideal, but there you are, it is what it is. So, I can hear like a tick, 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 tick. I don't know what that's all about. It's like a ticking clock. And is that done? I think we're about done. Oh no, this is done. So you can see this film, even though it's sci-fi, is still being shot in the desert, but that's being used by another movie. But that's almost finished shooting. So I'm gonna bring this to shoot it. Obviously they'll go, well, we can't shoot it because there's no space, but this film is just finished shooting and then it's gonna move over. So, uh, uh, awards ceremony is about to take place, but let's release our film. So this is King of the Pile. Script quality was one out of five stars. So it's directed by Shirley Timmons, and the performance, well, it's mood plus experience plus genre fit equals the performance there. Starring Beth Galloway, so star relationships is average. So repair of sets is superb with a little rosette. Crew experience is poor. Overall movie quality was... Is that... Uh... <laughs> That's three-fifths of a star. Uh, we have star power good, genre interest superb, novelty value stan uh, superb, and technology is standard. Final movie rating is one and one-fifth stars. We can press this watch film here and see what it looks like. So this is King of the Pile. So <laughs> let's see what this thing is like. And obviously a bit of grain in the picture there. Keep it in the picture. Beth Galloway is PT morale or something. And there's the pleading that we saw right at the start as well. Very shocked. And, yeah. You can hardly see because it's so washed out. I mean, it's, it's yeah. We've got the uh, white balance off there. Anyway, we'll go back and we will have a look at this. Released. Effective your movie on your staff and studio. You can see overall increased a bit of stress, but experience has gone up. It took it was a seven month shoot and sixteen thousand to do that. And here's our ratings. Movie making is currently all about action movies, so releasing this now is a great call. Fast, furious, uh, frantic, if slightly predictable action script, and this are the negative ones. Beth Galloway's naive action acting has the funk of inexperience about it. By directing was a crime, Shirley Timmons would be facing life. Oh dearie me. Okay, so not getting personal at all there. So that's been released. So. That's uh, that's now done. So what will happen is their their ha their um their happiness is going to go up for a while. And oh, is this the first? Yes, it's first award ceremony. Right, let's watch this. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's move on to our first category. First category. What have we got? Staying at the top of the charts in such a competitive This is highest charting star. Okay. Which makes the achievements of the following stars all the more commendable. So let's have a look now at the list of nominees for highest charting star. All right. So Cream Ball Creations. Fair enough. Lion Ear Productions. Oh, and Maxi Pack Worldwide. Skip, we don't want to know. Uh, well, yeah, Cream Boat. Okay, fair enough. The next one is Highest Charting Movie, which is Cream Boat. And I'm going to guess that Highest Charting Studio... It's Cream Boat. Right, cool. So, that, that, well, good award ceremony, lads. Um, thank you. But we now have a wannabe Big Cheese achievement. We need to release five movies, make a total of half a million, and release movies with a total star rating of five. And that gives us the custom script office. And that is... As I said at the start, the way you can um, really make like some of your like masterpieces, if you want, and spend a lot of time making like a, a huge sprawling epic over you know a dozen films or whatever. And I think some people have. I I believe, and I might be getting this wrong. There was online functionality at one point where you could upload the films and stuff. I don't know if I'm making that up. There's definitely an online functionality bit. If I go to the uh, if I go to the main menu, you just say online, but then ask us to sign in. I assume, well, pretty much guarantee that is now dead and buried. Anyway, so we're still uh, making money off the Submarine Gang, a sci-fi, and King of the Pile, which is just being re recently released. We are now starting to shoot the Caesar Ultrances. Let's see what's happening. So it looks like she's wandering with a scanner. So, yeah, this is... Is that a sci-fi film? It is a sci-fi film, yeah. This action script is almost finished being uh, written, and there we go. We can double-click on any of these sets as well, and it will take us like through it, a little zoom in. So this is our Wild West set. So we've got behind the bar, the piano, going upstairs, like animals on the wall, and and uh, they're the typical like saloon doors. So let's go to let's go to shoot this thing. So we'll go to begin casting, and I will go with. Beth is our lead role, and then we'll have Shirley as our director to do directoring, and let's see what happens there. In terms of technology and sets and things like that, as the game progresses on, you will get different facilities and sets. We've got things like Basic Facilities, which is available on the 2nd of July 1925, and we can build for all, studi all studios on 1925, but when you get research, I believe you can get ahead of the curve on that one, but we uh, we haven't got that. We haven't got that. So anyway, let's go ahead and we will uh, write another script. This time, I think we're going to write a different type of... Actually, is our action film still trending? Yeah, action films are still trending. Um, later on, as I said, you'll get more sets, so I know there's like a... I think it's like a war, uh, like a war set, which is... Pretty much like No Man's Land, it's got like loads of craters and barbed wire and, and stuff all over, that sort of thing. And I've noticed that there's like still bits in the pavement that really need cleaning up. Where are our janitors? I can't see them. Oh, hang on, is this uh, finished? It is finished. So we've got our action flick here. However, my question is where they're going to shoot it. Are they are going to shoot it in... Oh, we're going to shoot it in here. So yeah, luckily we're not using that one. Now, as I said, the... Uh, later on, you can very easily um, write your own scripts. I say easily, it's, you have to select the scenes and the sets, and it's got a, a lot built in if you want to go down that route. Obviously, if you're not too bothered, if you're if you're just wanting it to be done pretty much automatically, then you just let the scripts sort of write themselves, um, or let the people write the scripts. I'm just going to put a couple more litter bins down because there's some litter pretty much all over the place. Um, that's already in that corner. Actually, we've got, we've got litter bins pretty much everywhere, so there we are. Um, we can also place, like, here we go, some, like, nice big leaf trees and stuff, so just to freshen the place up a little bit. And something like that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not going to place any... Do you want to place grass around here? No, it should be fine. Let's have a little zoom around this. And you hear like little ambient noises as well. So we've got like a dull hum and bleeps and bloops from, from this set. Whereas on this set, you can just like the... Mm, you can hear like that high-pitched fluorescent hum from the... It's going to go back over. Yeah, you can because you can manually control this, so... Just going back from the fluorescent tubes, if I can see them. Are there fluorescent tubes? Yeah, fluorescent tubes on the wall. Now, obviously, they've made these sets as 
generic as possible for the, for different periods. So this basement, for example, we build it in 1920s. I'm not too sure chainsaws like that would have been around in the 1920s because that looks like a plastic exterior. Well, even if it's metal, I don't know. It just doesn't seem uh, the case. And that's a recycle sign. In 1925? Recycling? That's that's not a thing, surely. In fact, is that a thing now? Uh, in certain parts of the world, which I won't state. <clears throat> right, we'll also go for... Oh, the Caesar Ultrances. We are going to get this film released. <laughs> and the script quality is... Four, uh, sorry, four-fifths of a star. Movie quality is one-fifth of a star. Overall release is one one fifth of a star we're not even going to watch it it's <laughs> five months shoot eight grand uh clear the cast and <laughs> director get on well the sets are less interesting than a train spot train spotting accountant uh-huh okay to be fair we did shoot back to back on the same thing but we have released five films so we have leveled up a little bit there so that's good um so for those guys then i mean what what we're going to do i mean we've got this bulletproof hat action script that's shooting, uh, that's being written. So once that's written, I will get it straight to being shot, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll start rehearsing this. So begin rehearsal, we will get our director on there and our lead roller. And that says uh, movie plus star mood. So if the mood's really happy, like flashing there, it means they get like really good bonuses. So it's not just about building the best studio. You have to really micromanage. Um, maybe not micromanage, but certainly manage the... Uh, expectations of and 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 wants and desires of your cast and crew so there you are the makeover department's quite interesting as well you can put it on auto makeover and that'll make their um where is it i think it's their yeah their looks go up in the fashion actually not fashion i believe but you can also when you put them in here you can either do it uh, auto or go to makeover and yes makeover you can literally change everything pretty much about them uh, it looks like we've got some stuff unlocked there so let's have a quick look and we can see that yes we now have a bar so let's get a bar in this place wouldn't be a movie studio without everybody being sourced up there we go and we'll put in some pathing because if you don't have pathing then that is actually a negative on the studio as well what else have we got we've got pretty much everything as far as i can tell there and oh hang on is that script ready to be shot it is so ah sadly it's been while well, the saloon's been used by another place so we'll just have to put it to the shoot and we'll see how long that takes for them to shoot the other film. Um, we're about two fifths, uh, sorry, two thirds of the way shooting the above belief, which is an action script there. But because we're shooting these back to back, it might not work out. Here's our sets here. We've got Musty Cellar, Starship Bridge, Stage, Wild West Desert, and the Wild West Saloon. That's all we have. But you get a lot more as you progress on. There's also an expansion as well. Uh, the expansion is called, I believe, Stunts and Effects, which came out in 2006. And I do own it. I've just not installed it for this playthrough because, quite frankly, I've never had any success with it. It's always glitched out on me. I've, when I install it and play the game, it unlocks everything from the get-go. So in 1920s, we've got like a modern a modern sort of set with like uh, taxis upside down, you know, from like New, New York and all that. So it's, um, did I just try to say that? Yeah, I did. Uh, so yes, it's something that I don't really, I don't really bother with. I have to remember as well that this came out in 2005. I mean, this predated YouTube by a couple of years. Um, and I think if it was a couple of years later, it might have done a lot better because all of these would have been uploaded, maybe even maybe even connected to YouTube automatically. That would have been brilliant. Anyway, uh, we've got this above belief. It's just finished shooting. And we've got a total of one and one-fifth of a star. I mean, let's have a quick look at the star bit of it. We know it's just going to be in the saloon anyway, so they're just going to be wandering in and basically nodding their head, and that'll be about it. And let's see what it's like. Stand back always, Johnson. Oh yes, there's the doors open up. The gunslinger comes into town. Looks quite unhappy about something. And oh, pulls a gun. And are they just shot? Hang on, that's that's them as well. Or is that an extra? All events. What's this? All all events and characters in the movie are fictitious. Any resemblance to real people, living or dead, is. Don't know because it went off. Uh, coincidental, I'm guessing. Anyway, there we go. Five months shoot, 11 grand. And uh, Relic Action Script, Above Belief Cast, uh, but in most parts, solid performances, and yeah, negative on Beth Galloway's action experience. But, yeah. 
Oh, is this isn't the radio there, but it looks like we've now got a custom script office. Signed off by the Lionhead Motion Picture Academy, which means that we can create our own scripts. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at that. Custom script writing office, which I'm going to place in the bottom here, and obviously then connect that up with our pathing. So over to pathing, run the pathing across, and then I will um, go for maybe that, and yeah, job done. Right. So we'll see what happens there. This is our bar, and obviously 1920s, yeah, it looks a bit too modern. Certainly no smoking, that would not happen. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could smoke in a gas works in the 1920s, but let's just go ahead and put them in. It is bar and VIP bar. We'll give them the VIP bar, and there we go. All of, the, all of these guys are going to chill out, so yeah, and hopefully their approval will go up, and they'll bit get to know each other because they're talking away and stuff, so oh, you can see the thought bubbles going back and forward. Right. So this other film's been shot by the sound of it. I can hear the clapper there. And oh, there you go. So actor drinking. What else can you do? Drunk, merry, or wasted? Let's put it on wasted. <laughs> okay, fine. And let's let's write another script. Let's try and move away, however, from from that. We're going to do a sci-fi film this time. And um, oh yeah, here we go. So this is uh, our advanced movie maker. And I'm not going to do this because it is quite a time consuming thing so you will set up your lead and the supporting and everything else and you have detailed uh, diff different structures so we're just going to go for look it's a comedy film with a simple structure and then you literally select right so I want it to be opening in the musty cellar so that'll load that in and you can say look I want a cold open and it's going to it's going to tell you the cost it's going to you know alter the lighting conditions you can alter like uh, <laughs> the different backdrops and such and put like other bits in there i mean it's so so you can see you know put a little extra bit piece in this is a full movie maker you know you can create and people have done create like really big uh films i'm just going to say quite exit and confirm there's our script which obviously i will can it there but i just want to show you that it is possible to build pretty much what everything you want so extremely powerful certainly for the time as well in uh let's say 2005 2006 and e extremely creative as well and we have another person here. This is Charlotte Warren. Uh, middling looks, not great physique. Uh, bubbly relaxed, doesn't bore easily and moderate drinker. So they're probably going to be maybe director material, but anyway. Submarine Gang is now ready for archiving, so we will do just that. Our rating at the moment, we are third in terms of studio rating, generic productions there. And you can also see we're on, uh, what is it, one and three-fifths of a star and a lot of prestige is actually going up because of the repair and such so having all of these janitors is working out quite well so that's getting shot that's fine this one's getting written these guys are a bit too unhappy are oh, they not unhappy about the salary well that's fair enough to be fair we are making decent cash so let me go ahead and um sorry i'm in the wrong bit here a salary you click on that bit and then we go over to this one and i'm going to just increase the salary pretty much across the board but then alter the the longer serving members here and there we go that should hopefully get them uh, cheered up a little bit yeah there we are um you can also like just say sort of put them down like to like view the statue and oh another pa uh, pack has been unlocked wild west bank steal the show uh four wild west costumes nine props and one backdrop so let's go ahead and place that in there so go over to our sets which is the second one down wild west bank and we're gonna put the wild west bank Probably in, I would imagine here is a reasonable place for it. I'm trying to keep these in a bit of a straight line here, which is, well, doing a grid system again. It's very on brand, I guess. <laughs> Let's uh, close that down and job done. Um, as I mentioned, you can, are these going to be... Will they hang around there? No, I thought they were. You can, let's say, go for an auto makeover, but if you want, you can also just go for makeover. And this is Beth. So that's what currently what they're wearing. We can put them in, like, a cavalry uniform, Wild West dresses. Uh, we've got 1920s underwear. We've got Edwardian outfits, but you can change, like, the trim and the necklaces and, you know, what they're wearing, tights and shoes and even iris colour. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, boggles the mind that there's so many options in here and uh, let's go to auto I don't think the game did that well um, I think it was I do think it, maybe because of maybe when would this came out 2005 so when did the sims come out that would that be sims 2 era I would assume so perhaps wrongly I'm not really up on my sims release knowledge <laughs> I'll have to uh, check that up but yeah it feels about right and, I mean, 2000, 
4 was Half-Life 2, so yeah, maybe, maybe 2, maybe even 3. I'm guessing 2, though, back in 2. But, you know, if this came out a couple of years later with the whole YouTube thing, maybe that would have helped it a bit. Anyway, we do have this sci-fi script ready to go, so we'll go for begin casting, and we want to wait for this makeover to be completed. And obviously that will, if I check on this, increase their increase their fashion rating, which I'm going to assume that the fashion rating slowly goes down um, as as they sort of you know wear the same things. So still receiving a makeover, still receiving a makeover. We've got them coming out of the wardrobe now, and it's automatically. Hang on, they've just after just. Did they just clone them? Hang on. Um, yes, they've got the same clothes, pretty much, as far as I can tell. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the game has given the exact same thing, which is making it even harder to figure out who the director is and the star. But there you go. Let's just cast that and let it go. So I've hit a half a million mark, uh, really helping your studio rating. Good, good. We've also got uh, Flight Across the Atlantic and all these other events. I don't know if we get... I know you can get movie stars from... Oh, we need an extra, do we? Um, I think this is an extra over here. No, that's crew. Where is extra? Where are extras? I think over here are extras, so you can be an extra. You can promote extras to stars, I believe. And also stars can come from other other studios. Basically, you can port them for the studios. And um, this is a uh, reporter here. I want to take pictures and stuff, and that will increase their star rating. But looks like there's nobody around to do that. And yeah, you get different stars. And I wonder if you get like historical movie stars that come along so you'll get not maybe not ex i wouldn't expect exact names but uh, for example you might get like um uh stuart mcking instead of steve mcqueen or something like that something that you can recognize and go ah i know who that's supposed to be portraying um i wonder if that is in the game if it isn't it's uh you know a bit of a shame let's shoot this sci-fi flick and it's going to be shot in there really of all places oh well anyway that is not a bad little look at that. So that's been shot over there. That's looking that one. And this one is close as well. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, other things that we can get, as I said, research. You can get a lot more sets, more backdrops as well. So this here, for example, this will stay the same, but the backdrops here will change as you unlock more. So basic war is coming up in 1927, which will give us... The basic war pack. Can we click on it and find out more? We cannot. Um, what's this? Staggering human shrinking box announced. 100 people fit in a shoebox claim experts. Ah, and sci-fi will go up. So you can check the times and see what releases may be popular. Anyway, well, let's release this other film. This is an action one. This is the Bulletproof Hat. Script quality is one out of five stars. Ben Holworth and Danielle done all right. And oh, movie quality is three out, three fifths of a star. Overall film quality is four fifths of a star, and it will shoot fourteen grand. And let's release it. But I think that's a fairly decent uh, look at the game. That's pretty much what the game is. This is the moment to moment. Obviously, there's more things to manage and to check out, and there's a lot of nuance, I guess, to to running the studio that I just haven't got. But I did remember, I did think of this quite fondly and remember it quite fondly. And coming back into it. Yeah, still very playable, very fun, very creative, and just a nice experience. I think probably ahead of its time, and it's a shame that it's... I wouldn't say forgotten, I I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of people that really enjoy this game, and as I said at the start, there's a couple of other YouTubers actually playing it as well, which is one of the reasons why I was uh, sort of rem re reminded about it. And I thought, yeah, uh, I'll check it out, and I'm glad I did. It's a shame it's not, let's say, on sale. I will put any links I can find to a... To, to a place where you can uh, buy it i'll put them in the description if it is even possible but yeah that's been a bit look back at the movies overall uh, no great surprises. I did totally forget about the radio announcer though, so it was nice to uh, rediscover those. And, oh yeah, I remember this. <laughs> it was uh, always quite amusing. But there you are. That's a little bit of the movies. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to see more of the movies, by all means let me know. If you share your thoughts and uh, opinions in the description and stuff. If you played it uh, back in the day, what, what your like tips were and you know what sort of advice you may give, what you like to do in it. It would just be nice to hear some anecdotes. And if you want to see more of this sort of thing, all the games, then by all means, let me know in the comments. Either way, I hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.